Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you. And today we are going to compare the same slug weight except two different sizes. This slug right here is the 218, which you may or may not have seen on the channel previously, and they have performed very, and I mean very well, you know, all the way out to 100 yards, shooting about half MOA and doing that at 50, so which would be about a quarter inch groups. Now, with that said, I went ahead and got the 217s. As you can see here, 218, 217. And I'm gonna see how well these do being the same weight as the 218. With that said, I'll be using my Air Venturi Avenger 22 caliber and shooting at 50 yards. And I just wanna see if the different sizes really mean that much. Now, theoretically, they should, if your barrel is a smaller bore diameter with the groove and land dimensions. Now, if you don't know, the Air Venturi Avenger has a very tight bore. That's why it can be picky depending on what you're doing. And obviously every slug that you buy, you can pick the different sizes that you want, but there is no slug that small. So in theory, the slugs should shoot out of the gun very well in the right conditions because they're always bigger than the bore. Now, what you have to consider is how much those swage up or get smashed into the rifling and engage the rifling when you close that bolt probe or pellet probe pushing the slug up into the breech. Now I personally don't mess with the heavy stuff because that gun cannot take it. If you watch my H&N sampler pack on STKO uh, like a year or so ago, it didn't care for the heavy stuff and I, pre I pretty much had to hammer the cocking lever home with my hand to get it to close which is not fun. So I pretty much steer clear of the heavy stuff. And there's really no need to anyway. Unless your gun is really souped up, shooting extremely hot, this does not. There's, there's no reason for it. Now with that said, let me show you of what these two different slug sizes can do on target. Another slug tested at 50 yards. No barrel band screws on the barrel. No grub screws, I should say. H and N. 21 grain, 217. 800 feet a second. 2200 PSI on the regulator, four and a half turns in on the hammer spring. H&N, 21 grain, 218, 50 yards. Here we go. Five. 21 grain, 218, four and a half turns, 2200 PSI, 50 yards. Okay, so I shot the 217s the other day when I put the gun back together. Now, don't be alarmed, there's nothing wrong with it. I did it for a reason. I was trying something out and I'm checking into something that may help all the Avenger users out there. But anyway, I put the scope back on and that's what it shot. That's awesome. I pulled one too on, on the third shot, but they can be covered by a dime at 50 yards, easy. Can't beat that. And then this is a six shot group. So five of them were 
half MOA, just a hair over a quarter inch at 50 yards. That's incredible. And that's the 217s. So I switched to the 218s. They didn't do so well out of the gate. So I remembered that the way I had my scope mounted was not the way that I had it mounted when I shot the 218s before. So I moved it forward and this is what it printed. So here's a five shot group, almost literally identical to the 217. As you can see, group could be covered easily by a dime at 50 yards. No questions there. Again, almost the same exact group. And this is the 217s with the scope setting the same way as the 218s. So that is what matters. It matters how they fly the rifling engagement on those particular slugs. No matter if they're the same weight, same velocity, same gun settings, it's all about how it engages the rifling and if the different diameters stretch out or stay the same once they get into the rifling, as you could see here. And that is incredible for a slug shooting 800 feet a second at 50 yards. And even with my pulls in there, slugs are notorious for me to have really bad pulls. I mean, not horrible as you could see, but still, not bad. So with that said, does the slug diameter really matter? Again, it comes down to what the dimensions of the barrel are. I would not shoot a 2165 slug if your barrel is 216. It's so close. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just, it'd be too close for me to even attempt it. Again, this barrel is ultra tight. That's why you can't shoot the heavy stuff because you're hammering the slugs home into the breech because it's trying to squish into the rifling. It's so tight in there. But other than that, these slugs are bigger than 210, than 213. So obviously, again, if you get it under the right conditions, they should shoot really good. Now with that said, I was goofing around and literally shot three cards back to back with three different slugs, guys, at 50 yards. Three cards hit back to back, three different slugs. Twenty two hundred PSI, four and a half turns in on the hammer spring. Woo! As you can see, I hit the cards on the side because the slugs they they're not like pellets, obviously. And one slug that I haven't shown yet, which is the FX hybrids. 
I still hit the card back to back. I hit three cards back to back in a row with three different slugs, guys. Hope you understand what I'm talking about here. It really comes down to your barrel diameter. If you're shooting a really wide open bore, then yes, this could be a huge significant factor. And as you've seen, unless I move my scope to the specific trajectory that that slug is putting off, then it really does make a big difference. And how do you know that? You're probably going to say, well, James, how'd you figure that out? Well, if you watched my videos before, you know that I figured out that my barrel on my Air Venturi Avenger 22 points up. Well, I removed the barrel grub screws in this setup right now for the slugs because the barrel is more level. Now, how can you tell that? That's the question. Besides leveling it out and all this and that, you could shoot it and not just shoot it normal. You could shoot the gun upside down, which I have done. So not only do I shoot left-handed, you know, left eye, right-handed, all this and that, I shoot my guns upside down sometimes just to see what happens. And what happened was I figured this out months ago when it was still pretty cold outside. I was using Crossman Premier hollow point pellets. I should have included this clip in that video, the recent video I did about the best pellet still. But the thing is I shot that gun upside down and I basically had to hold like two or three feet above the card at 50 yards because the barrel was pointing when you flip the gun upside down if the barrel is pointing up to begin with it would be pointing down upside down so it shot the pellet downward and that's how you can tell if you're using the same level same everything same scope adjustment same POI and if your barrel is pointing up that's how you could tell is when you shoot it upside down Upside down. Holy cow. Woo! So everybody, I appreciate you watching. As always, I hope you got something from this video and definitely check your barrel dimensions. Again, in theory, it should be fine if you have a really tight barrel, really tight bore. That shouldn't matter. Now it matters when you get to more lead, meaning more weight and a bigger size, or if your barrel is not really tight, that's when it come in, that's when it can come into play. But as the gun sits right now, I know how it shoots. I can adjust my scope to that and fix the error and get it to group very, very good. As you guys have seen previously, getting the Air Venturi Avenger to shoot half MOA at 100 yards back to back, hitting playing cards multiple times and hitting aspirin off a balloon. And it was so close on the first try I did it that it was literally a hair off the aspirin in the card and nicked the balloon. But I appreciate you watching as always. Thanks again for watching. Hope you got something from it. See you on the next one, guys.